Welcome to another episode of Hey, I'm Just a Fan Podcast. And damn it, we starting this off hot. Your boy Donnie, Donald, DT. <laughs> Everywhere they go through, all the gangsters around and they hold good. Nigga, what? I'm gonna have to they go through. Because you can front if you want, you be popping them things. <laughs> oh, man. I know I'm making light of the situation. Um, I'm just, you know, this is like the internet, the internet, once something kind of crazy happens, but you turn out okay, the internet's like time for these jokes. That's, that's how the internet works because within five minutes, the internet had hella memes queued up already. Now, if you've been living under a rock, somebody tried to make an attempt on Donald Trump's life while he was speaking in Pennsylvania, like literally let off like six to eight shots and looked like he got grazed in the ear. But in good old Donald Trump fashion, what did he do? Hold on, hold on, wait a second. Give me one second. Ah, black power fist. <laughs> Threw up the fist. People went crazy. I don't even know what to say about this situation. When I first saw the video, I was just like, hella shit just looked off. Let's start with this. Out the gate, Secret Service, you're fired. <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all can't even get a job in security ever again. It'll be hard for y'all to get a job, period, after the display that y'all just showed on how to take care of a former president and presidential candidate. And it don't matter if you like Trump or not. That shit was just unacceptable from the Secret Service. Y'all are probably worse than the security guards at comedy clubs, at rap concerts. What's wrong with security in the past five, ten years? Like, when it comes to, like, trying to protect the the person that is considered, I, I don't know, the important person or the prize or whatever the case may be, the entertainer, why is security late on protecting them? You've seen multiple comedians get attacked on stage and actually had to fight their way out of something or get thrown stuff at them. You've been seeing rappers get attacked on stage and security come out hella late. <laughs> oh, 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 I got to do a job? Nigga over here listening to the concert like this, this, nigga, this nigga J. Cole, dope. <laughs> I, know, I know the music's tight, fam, but you still got a job to do. You got to tune out. All right, your job is to protect. So, like I said, whether you like Donnie or not, Secret Service dropped the damn ball. And all of them need to be like a, a, some kind of a extra background check about what they've been doing the past six months. If they've been making any calls, anything, because that shit was just hella weird. Them dudes was just way too slow. I wouldn't hire them to save anybody's life anymore. And what makes this even crazier, this was caught all on tape. So we all got to watch this play out in real time. That's that's the crazy part about this. And now with the Internet and all the time that we had to look at stuff. There's been a lot of people out there that are just like analyzing the video and analyzing what's going on. And they're just like something just seems a little off. You know, you have people kind of looking to the side before it happens. There's supposedly reports that people were saying like, hey, there's a somebody over there. Like there's <laughs> somebody up there with a rifle and they still didn't get to it on time. Now, it looks like they ain't no killing the dude. His name was Thomas Matthew Crooks. He was a 20 year old or 20 something year old, um, actually Republican, because when they, you know, when things came out, that's the thing with all these reports, when things are happening like this, immediately people are saying like, it had to be the Democratic side. They had to do it. And I ain't gonna lie, I thought so too with that aim, because <laughs> if you, you got a target and you missed this badly over this many shots. You probably a Democrat. You probably you probably can't hit a lick. Now, that's not to say the Democrats can't shoot because, you know, I'm sure they can. But have you have you seen the picture of this man? Just looking at him, he has the typical active shooter look, active school shooter prototype visual. Now, if I'm being honest, that's a lot of Donald Trump's fans. They all kind of look <laughs> very similar. And now for me personally, I just want to understand and know what was his agenda? Like, what was his point of doing this if he's a Republican himself and he's a young Republican at that? It seems like, you know, he would be a, a Donald Trump fan. Why was he aiming to kill? And let me just add to this. Fire the snipers, too. You niggas is hella late, man. Like, all that whole crew. <laughs> y'all gotta go, bro. Y'all gonna have to find another way to feed y'all families, nigga, because y'all did a terrible job. I know y'all ended up killing the kid, but still, at the end of the day, y'all was too slow on the draw.
Now, there's some people out there that are calling this a possible false flag. And here's the thing. I'm not here to even fully argue that, to be honest with you, because this shit look hella suspect. But here's the thing. A lot of hypocrisy around that for me, because y'all weren't with that a few years ago when people were calling other things false flags. You're like, nah, this this y'all trying to say something's a false flag. That's not real. All you little conspiracy theory and you little tin hat wearing motherfuckers. Nah, man, how could you even say something like this with these other things? It's like, look, man, me personally. I don't put shit past America. I don't put shit past anybody with hella bread, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fully trust you. Shit, I had a whole conspiracy theory show called Keenan's Conspiracy Theories. It was the best show on YouTube, if you want to be honest. It was with me and Tony Baker. We sat in a tent and we discussed conspiracy theories in a very hilarious way, but we talked about some serious things. So if you haven't, actually go watch that show. Just type in Keenan's Conspiracy Theories. But we talked about a whole bunch of different things like this. And look, the presidential run this year has been an absolute shit show. Like, Joe Biden has been sleepwalking this whole time. And Trump is an entertainer, dog. Like, he's been an entertainer for decades at this point. I don't put this past him for this possibly being a false flag incident. Now, that doesn't mean that shit wasn't real because um, it's reported that somebody actually lost their life and I think others were injured. But if you're being honest, man, this country has no problem sacrificing their people to get a point across you can look at previous incidents i ain't even got to name the shits i don't trust anybody that's just me i'm not telling you not to trust nobody but for me personally i don't trust none of y'all now for me personally i'm not super pro either side i'm not a super pro republican or democrat and if i'm being honest with you when i see black people specifically black people ride too hard for either side all i think of is that tommy davidson kind of like a uh, clip from the breakfast club and he goes who are these niggas? <laughs> That's how I'll be looking at y'all, man. Neither one of these sides have had our best interests for decades. What I hate is, especially when you black, if you don't go super hardcore for Republicans, black people try to destroy you and be like, you must be for the other side. You you must be a conservative, blah, 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 blah. Hey, man, I don't fuck with none of these niggas. And when you go too hard, and all honestly, I can't trust you either, dog. Both of these parties have tried to kill us as a people. They have either said things to entice people to kill us or they've actually put laws in place to kill us. That's both sides right there. So you can never get me to go hard on either side unless there's going to be a hard reset on both sides, essentially just depleting the shit and rebuilding it. Because at this particular point, I just, I, I, I gotta go with my own instinct. I would never tell anybody who to vote for. I would never tell anybody who I'm voting for because at the end of the day, you make your own decision. So I'm going to say this. Don't come to me for your all your political advice because I'm not that dude. All right. But if I was to say anything about it, specifically for black people, I'm not speaking for anybody else, specifically for us as a community. If we want to get any sort of thing done at some point, we're going to have to leverage the bread as a black community and be like, hey, man, if you want our vote as a whole or for at least as a majority we got this much money we need these things in place specifically for black people i'm not talking about well this gonna open up the doors for everybody nah fuck all that y'all don't put other bills in place specifically for other cultures and other races and other genders all type of shit we want specifically for black people here is the bread you'll get it if you make you put these policies in place or at least do a hard attempt to put these policies in place. If not, neither one of you niggas getting the vote at the end of the day. And I know this is kind of a hard pill to swallow. We getting fucked regardless. That's the truth. You can try to fight me in the comment section, whatever the case may be. We are getting fucked as a black community regardless. It's shown throughout the past. You can't show me where we haven't gotten fucked at. You can't show me. <laughs> now to go back to the Donald Trump shooting, right? I know people don't mess with Candace Owens like that, but here's the thing. She made an interesting point, right? And I know some people can't even listen to her, but that's why for me personally, I can, I try to listen to all sides when it comes to certain things. And she had put up a video recently, like right after it happened. And she talked about something was off with the situation also, which I was surprised she even said that because I just thought she'd be super hardcore. But she was like, nah, something's off. She did like a, uh, she, and I'm paraphrasing here. So you can go watch her video about it. But I think she was doing like a speech for like the NRA or whatever at the NRA. And she was talking about how her husband almost got shot by the Secret Service because he was like coming down the stairs and it was like all over it, like fast. And she was like, that doesn't seem right. Like they they let some shit slide, like something's off about the situation. And I think that's why people are saying this shit might be either a false flag situation or something's just off about it. Because 
for what I remember, at least from what I read before or even heard about, like they do like a clean sweep within like a few miles of wherever these people are going to be speaking at. Where like you, somebody is this important, like a Donald Trump or Joe Biden. They usually do like a clean sweep of the area and the surrounding areas for any like suspicious spots. And they're like, yo, snipers could be here, here and here, like in these particular areas, in these buildings, clean sweep this whole shit. And they usually go through that even before they speak and up to weeks beforehand. They're knocking on people's doors. They're asking questions. They're probably even screening people's calls at that time. They know some shit's going to come down over here. They're probably like everybody within a five mile radius. Everybody's calls getting screened. And then for you to have this lackadaisical response and for this shit to happen, nah, bro. I think personally, after all this happened, this is going to at least boost Donald Trump's ego. Like, you motherfuckers tried to kill me. They tried to come for me and they couldn't do it. Like, he gonna, <laughs> he gonna, be, he gonna be patting his chest hard. And if I'm being honest with you, a lot of his fans gonna do the exact same thing. A lot of his supporters are gonna be out there like, see, they, try to, they gonna go harder for him. Now, I know a lot of people didn't want to hear this because a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of rumblings online saying like, well, after this happened, you know, he, he won. And then I see people push back and saying like, that's the dumbest shit you can say. You an idiot if you say something like that. No, that's not idiotic, actually. That's very, very not necessarily smart to say, but it makes sense. There's some people that are probably on the fence between who they're going to vote for. And after seeing something like this, they're going to be like, yo, man, like this shit is crazy. Like, let's just they might start to cast their vote on one side. Like I said, I'm not telling you who to vote for. But I also don't trust people that are super gun ho when it comes to these candidates like that. I don't know. So it's just a tricky conversation to have. And I think that there are just a lot of people that are misinformed and um, not as intelligent on politics as they think they are. I never sit there and act like I'm the most political person because I'm not. I never sit there and act like I dive into politics because I don't. And I got a lot of stuff to learn in that department. But, I mean, on this podcast, I'm going to speak about the shit because it's my fucking podcast. So I'm going to speak about it. But I just know shit is going to get real, real weird going into November of this year. Now, let's lighten it up a little bit. Tyler Perry just dropped a new movie called Divorce in the Black with Megan Good and Corey Hardrick. And they are the stars of this movie. And in good old Tyler Perry fashion, <laughs> he got the people talking. Out the gate, people are saying this is probably his worst movie yet. And some people are saying, how do you top your worst movie when you already make worse movies? Like, you already make terrible <laughs> movies. The movie is about a couple that end up getting divorced. And essentially, like, both sides of the parents never really liked the other side like that. And it's, it's to me, it's a typical Tyler Perry story. You know, um, the man is the villain. The woman's not. And essentially, she dogs the guy out. He comes back and he tried to do something evil, like try to kill her or try to abuse her or something like that. And then that's pretty much the climax and, you know, the end of the movie type shit. Um, I was watching this movie with my wife, man. And the first thing I said was like, did this movie start in the middle of how a movie's supposed to start? Like to me, it started like at the climax where it wasn't supposed to like this. This opening scene is probably one of the craziest opening scenes you're going to see in a movie and i'm talking about even for tyler perry because he already do some wild shit if you haven't seen the movie this is how the opening scene happens they're in church Corey harger's character's brother just died now we don't know who this person is we just know he he got killed or something like that so the, all the families are in there making good fathers actually you know the the pastor so he's kind of preaching but and honestly, he's doing some weird shit. Like, he's talking about how bad this dude was. And, and I guess, like, this whole Corey Hart, this whole family in, in, the, in the movie. Anyway, I forgot his character's name. But in, so I'm going to keep referring to it as Corey Hardrick. <laughs> so don't take it as him as a person. But in the movie, his family in there is, is considered like the low lives of the town. Like they're, they're murderers, they're rapists, they're, they're thieves, they're all the above, right? So Megan Good's father, who's a pastor, is, he's, he's saying all this <laughs> as he's preaching over the dead body. Like, yeah, he's dead, but like kind of like he deserved it. And it's just like, yo, you agreed to do this for my family for whatever the cost was or cheap or whatever it is. Give him a good funeral, and if you want to talk shit afterwards, talk shit afterwards. But you ain't about to do this in the church. So, of course, Corey Hardrick's uh, mother in the movie, she stands up, goes off, goes crazy, and somewhat rightfully so. But I'll get back to her a little bit later because she's, she's one of the worst characters in the movie. But it gets so bad that in this opening scene, the mother's like, get the body. And they're like, what? They're like... No, get the body. Get it out of here. So the family goes and they grab the casket. She was like, nah, leave the casket. 
We don't want nothing of theirs. Take the body out. <laughs> Nigga. They take the raw body out the casket and pick this nigga up. And they struggling to get this nigga out of here, too. Pick this nigga up. Everybody's screaming like, what you doing? What's happening? And they dragging the raw dead body that's been embalmed, right? <laughs> that ain't got really nothing inside of it. They struggling to get this nigga out of here. They drag him out, throw him in the back of a pickup truck. And they drive out of there the whole time, you know, the body moving too. He in the truck doing this. You could tell <laughs> they just did a terrible job at putting that together. You could tell just a guy in there just like, oh, no, oh, shit. Y'all hitting over some bumps, man. Slow down. And I watched an interview with Corey Hardray. And he talked about how pretty much to get ready for this role, he uh, embodied and he watched a lot of like, um, I guess, what's love got to do with it. He watched uh, Lawrence Fishburne's Ike Turner character. And if you ever seen that movie, it's like he tried to take that character. Like, he didn't just embody it. Like, he's like, let me just take what he did and do it as this. Like, in the movie, he kept doing this two-finger point like, all right, now. <laughs> you can shut your ass up now. All right, now, bitch. Like, <laughs> he kept doing this two-finger point for no reason. He just kept like, uh-huh, yeah. Now, Megan Good in the movie, out the gate, she's just fine as fuck. Like, she's just fine as hell. Ain't no if ands, or buts about it. The first thing my wife said when she saw Megan Good in this movie, she was just like, she's like she don't belong here, like, in this town. Like, this particular town that she's in, she too fine <laughs> to be in this town. To me personally, it looked like everybody was stuck in, like, the 70s, and Megan Good was in modern time. Now, later on, you see Megan Good's best friend and her husband. They look like they're more modern also. But everybody else, like, they just stuck in the backwoods, like, old, just 70s, 60s type visual. So eventually, Corey Hardrick, he thinks, like, you know, making good characters, family did it on purpose, and she, she has something to do with it, and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like the, he's, he was an idiot throughout the whole movie. So he ends up wanting a divorce. And there's just so many plot holes in the movie, dog. Of course, an old flame comes up. That's who she ends up messing with, you know. Corey Hargis characters and the brothers don't don't like to do. They beat him up before in the past. They mama never liked Megan Good's character. And to me, the funniest scene in the movie was probably a scene. I don't even know if that shit was written. I don't even know if it was improvised or what the case was. But Corey Hargis character comes to where Megan Good works at, right? She works like at a, at a bank or something like that. And he comes in there and he's just like, you know, he's pissed off about some shit. And then as he's leaving, <laughs> he's walking out and you don't see who he's talking to. But all you hear is, I'll knock your fucking nose off. And then <laughs> it just cuts to like a guy going like, like, what did I do? Like, what did I say? Nigga, we rewinded that part like 10 times and just laughed our ass off. There was just so many ridiculous parts in here that made sense for a Tyler Perry movie. But it, for a movie in general, it just doesn't make sense. But... For his crowd, it makes sense. To wrap the movie up, of course, making good gifts with the, the old flame. Gets with him because he, he always loved her. Uh, her daddy get beat up and shot. Damn near killed. The mama of the uh, Corey Harvest character. The reason why I said I hate. Because, like, that's the thing. Tyler Perry, he, he, he does not create a lot of redeemable characters in his movies. Like, the mother in this movie was just like, her sons weren't shit. They clearly weren't shit. Like I said, they were murderers, they were rapists, they were thieves, they were everything. And she just like, well, those are my boys, and that's it. And it's just like, the character was so bad, it was believable. Like, I know there's mothers out there that's like, they don't care how much of a villain that their son is. They got their sons back. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't know if I'll be that type of parent. If my son or daughter is that much of a villain, I'm going to be like, yo, either we need to separate ourselves or you're going to probably need to do some jail time, motherfucker, because you ain't about to destroy this family because you an idiot. So, like, towards the end of the movie, when they beat making good daddy ass, it's like, he old. Why are you allowing this? As an old lady yourself, why don't you be like, hey, man, chill. He old. Just scare him a little bit. You know, get in his face and then throw his punk ass in the trunk or whatever. You gonna, or you get him a one little gut shot and get him up out of there. Nah, they shot this nigga. <laughs> And then threw this nigga in the truck afterwards, slumped up, bruised up, half dead. And at the end of the movie, for some reason, Megan Good's character is like, nah, I don't need no help. I'm going to go home and I'm going to meet him there. And Corey Harder's character going to be there and we're going to essentially fight this shit out one on one. And it's like, what the hell are you talking about? This nigga's clearly insane. And what made this whole thing just hilarious to me, like Tyler Perry just isms that are just like <laughs> that he just I don't know, he don't care about or he just fuck up about. 
Megan Good's character is there at the house first, and she's waiting for him. You hear glass break. Corey Hardwick's character comes from upstairs. Like, nigga, why are you coming from upstairs when you could have just came through the front door? You got the key. So you're telling me he's going to break the window two flights up in the house, climb two flights up from outside through the window, then come downstairs? What are we talking about, bro? <laughs> so they argue, they tussle throughout, and then eventually she hit him with a nice little shotgun blast, blow his ass through, kill him, or so it seems. It seems like he's dead. Because in Corey's interview, he kind of made it seem like there could possibly be like a part two. And it kind of ends at the hospital like, yeah, we did what we had to do. And we walk out and then they live happily ever after. It's like, say what you want about Tyler. But let's have a real discussion about him. Tyler Perry is a genius. I know y'all probably cussing at me listening to this right now. But Tyler Perry is brilliant. And here's why. First reason, there is probably not a better writer, producer, director, creator, whatever, right, that knows how to cater to their fan base better than Tyler Perry is legit the reason why he is a billionaire right he keeps costs low for the most part he has his own studio but the people that love Tyler Perry love Tyler Perry you can't tell them shit about him they're going to watch every single piece of content that he puts out whether it's a tv show whether it's a movie a sketch whether it's a whatever the case may be his fan base is gonna watch like he even said in the post, I couldn't wait for my fan base to see that first opening scene of this movie. I knew that that would make y'all go crazy and y'all would love it and y'all showing out because everybody, all his fans were going crazy about that scene. Like, oh, did y'all see that? Everybody else that saw that scene that's not his fan base is like, this is the most ridiculous, dumbest, craziest fucking scene ever in movie history. This is why his movies are stupid. But his fan base... All in. We have to understand, catering to your fan base and you keep feeding them what they want and they love it, that's a win for you. The next thing, Tyler Perry knows how to trend. That's right. Every time Tyler Perry drops a movie, every single movie that he's dropped, he ends up trending on the internet. Now, some of y'all going to say, well, it's not for the right reasons. It's for the wigs. It's for bad acting. It's for a bad script. It doesn't matter. He's trending. That's all these people see. Yo, you're trending for a very long time. The people that hate Tyler Perry movies still watch Tyler Perry movies. That's the brilliance of him. You hate his stuff so much, you have to watch how bad it is. And you don't believe me about trending? I Googled Divorce in the Black after we finished watching it. And you know what it said? It said the number two movie in streaming services. That's right. The number two streaming movie on streaming services was Divorce in Black right after I finished watching it. That was a few days ago before recording this podcast. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's just trending because everything's kind of hot right now. That scene's kind of trending. I'm going to wait a day or two and I'm going to see if it's still trending at in the top five. I looked it up again. Number one streaming movie on streaming services. This movie's on Amazon. So you know what they see? They see like, oh shit, you number one across all the platforms? <laughs> Keep going. Here's some more money, buddy. I think it sounded like a few movie deal with Amazon or something like that. I don't know how many movies it is. But they look at it like, hell, you already delivered. And another thing that Tyler Perry's great at, he is the king of trolling. Don't get it twisted. Tyler Perry is highly intelligent. He knows that his wigs are normally trash in these movies. High key in this particular movie, the wigs weren't really bad. They were actually pretty good. But for previous movies, his wigs were so bad, he knows they are. He knows that's going to get y'all talking about the movie. He's trolling you. Say what you want. Tyler Perry, a funny dude, bro. He's sitting back probably watching some of these videos that y'all make about his movies and about the wigs and stuff like that and all, these, all this, this, the terrible scenes. And he's probably sitting back cracking up laughing like... <laughs> Got him again, baby. Keep making your little videos about my movie. Keep saying how bad they are. You're just going to keep boosting it in the algorithm. I already have millions of fans. They going to watch it. If I can get a few more people that don't watch it to watch it because of how crazy it is, I win. You don't think Tyler Perry was trolling with that opening scene? Nothing in the movie after that top that. He got you. That's, that's like the first seven minutes of the movie. There's probably a lot of people that probably cut it off after that because it was so ridiculous, but it don't matter. I don't know how streaming metrics are necessarily measured, but I'm, I'm guessing it's somewhere within the first few minutes, right? You don't, you don't cut it off within the first minute. If you get past the first few minutes, 
you probably get credit for the stream. In that first seven minutes, you're going to watch the whole thing like, he can't be doing this. Ain't, ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way, boy. Is Tyler Perry a genius? So, Tyler Perry might actually be a movie genius. So, y'all can sit here and be upset at Tyler all you want. Y'all know y'all going to be watching the next movie that he dropped because he's going to put some ridiculous ass stuff in there also. So, I know y'all saw what happened with Megan Good and Michael Ely and uh, Jonathan Majors and Michael Ely picking her up and hugging her extra just a little, a little too extra. Now, I already knew that he either gave Jonathan Majors some dap or a hug before that clip ended up coming out because the clip that everybody was trying to show at first was he didn't give any love to Jonathan Majors. He just immediately went up to Megan Good, hugged her, picked her up off her feet, and then, you know, he essentially dapped up D Smoke and his lady, right, his wife. And then Jonathan Major's kind of looking a little weird right there, right? I was like, ah, I feel like somebody edited this. And, of course, I was right. Somebody edited the video, and he actually gave Jonathan Majors a hug first. And I think he might have even said something to him. And then, you know, he showed Megan some love. Now, the internet is up in arms by this, and rightfully so. I don't care if you know my lady or not. You don't pick her up off her feet, bro. That's just hella disrespectful. I don't care if you ain't seen her in years. You do not pick my lady up off her feet. Especially if you know cameras are around and you know they're going to capture this moment and make it a thing. Michael Ely comes off across as a, a pretty smart brother also, right? He's pretty cognizant and aware of the surroundings. So he should have known better than to do something like this unless he did it on purpose, which I feel like he did do it. I know he didn't do it and been like, oh, man, I can't believe this is happening. He was just like, eh, you know, either he don't really care or he's just like, nigga, this is like a sister to me or somebody I got love for. So I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to do what I want to do. This is essentially our relationship. So. If I want to pick her up, I'm going to, I pick her every time I see her, so I'm going to do it now. But the main question that people are asking, is this okay to do? And I'm going to sit here and tell you right now. If this was me and I was Jonathan Majors, let me come over here and talk to you real quick, brother. We talking. We're going to have a nice man-to-man -man stern talk. Now, I know there's cameras around, so we ain't going to just throw the hands immediately like that. But I'm going to be like, bro, show some respect. Whatever your relationship is, that's whatever to me. You don't just pick my lady up like that. Because you know if I walked over to your wife, because I think Michael Ely's married also. If I walk over to your wife and pick her up off her feet, or any dude picks your wife up off your feet, you're going to be like, brother, what you doing? You're doing too much. Now, this is why the internet is so ridiculous. Women are out here making posts talking about, see, the men are insecure. This is why y'all need to go get therapy. Y'all insecure about yourselves. He just showed her some love. What are you talking about? Do we have to always flip the situation for y'all to understand it? How would you feel if a lady came in the presence of your man, right? You're there. She comes through. He sees her. He picks her up off her feet. Oh, my gosh. How you been? Oh, I haven't seen you in so long. Give her the, the same greeting, whatever Michael Ely did. But he's doing that to another woman. You will go upside that man's head. That man won't even be able to have sex with you for the next probably week or two because you're going to be holding a grudge against him. So don't sit here and call somebody insecure over something that's just absolutely ridiculous. This is just about respect. You don't do that to somebody's significant other. Shit, I don't care if it's her gay best friend. Hey, relax, bro. You're doing too much. Like, you're causing a scene right now. Matter of fact, side hugs only. I don't need my girl's titties touching your chest, all right? I don't need y'all nipples connecting together. I don't need your pelvises connecting, fam. That's the type of hug he gave her. All that happened in that hug. That's way too intimate of a hug, and that's not your girl. I used to get mad at a little side, little hip hug, little little home. I call it the homie hug. You know, you just, hey, what's up, bro? You like, oh, you just gave me the homie hug. Especially if a woman's in a relationship or she's not feeling you that way in a in a in a sexual way. That is honestly the perfect hug to give a man to let you know, hey, nothing's here. You get nothing from me. I don't want you to think <laughs> that anything's going to be intimate between us. So, fellas, would you let a man hug your girl like this? And, ladies, would you let your man hug another woman like this? I want to know in the comment section because y'all was all open about it happening. Nah, nah, I don't think so. Y'all wouldn't be too happy if it was your man doing that. So, I don't even really know much else to talk about. You know, I mean, Team USA is out here balling. Um, Anthony Edwards feels like he's the best player on the team. I'll be real with you. I don't think he is. Not yet. I think he's – he has to learn how to – being the best player on the Timberwolves versus being the best player on Team USA is two different things. You are now on a team with all of the greats. And being the best there is different than being the best on a team where there's not many greats, <laughs> which is the Timberwolves. You're probably the only great on there. To me, the best player on there will still be LeBron James. Whether you hate him or love him or not, 
he has the experience and he knows what to do and how to win with Team USA. He learned a lot from that team with Kobe, and I think he's going to bring a lot of that here with this team. And now he's the vet. He's he's He can be considered kind of like that Kobe character for this team. But I'll be honest with you. I think they're going to run through the brackets, man. I, I don't see a team out there that's going to beat Team USA. I just don't think they have enough firepower. Now, there is a lot more NBA players that play overseas now because we have a lot more just like overseas players in the NBA. But I still don't think they have enough to, to, to beat these guys. Now, how would you rank this Team USA team versus the teams in the past, right? The, the Dream Team, the Redeem Team, all those teams and stuff like that. How would you rank those teams? And for me personally, I think I got to go with the 92 Dream Team first. I just think they just have enough power players on there to get it done. You know, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, John Stockton, um, just, you know, Charles Barkley. That team was just absolutely stacked. All the teams are stacked, actually. There's, there's no team that's on a Team USA that's not stacked. But I'm, if I'm ranking them, original Dream Team 92 first. Then I will put that Kobe USA team up there. When he came through and they had a little documentary about them, I will put them second. Then I will put that Vince Carter USA team right after that. And then we'll see how this team comes out. But I, right now I have this team, right now the current 2024 USA team, I will have them ranked fourth out of these teams. So I want to know in the comments section, how would you rank the USA teams in the past? You even got to name my four. It could be any, any other four. So what would be your top four USA teams for US men's basketball? I want to know in the comments section. So yeah, man, that's been this episode of Hey, I'm Just a Fan Podcast. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, you know, follow the podcast, share the podcast, download it, do whatever, watch it on YouTube, go watch previous episodes. And we thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hey, I'm Just a Fan Podcast. Peace.